this is the stain that I'm going to use on this model. I haven't used this before. I've usually used uh, shoe dye and alcohol. Uh, but I thought I would try this uh, to see how this works uh, on this model. This is a, um, a premix stain, and there's a whole variety of uh, colors and tones. Uh, it's, it's made by Hunterline, and um, it has an alcohol base as well. So uh, this will be something I'll be trying uh, on this model. After I've grained the strip wood, uh, it's right now ready for staining. And in the past, when I stain uh, a large number of pieces, for example, railroad ties, um, a lot of strip wood that's going to be all the same, I will make up a little bath of the uh, stain solution. You can see that on my other videos and uh, building trestles, uh, where everything is sort of soaked and and uh, and immersed in the in the stain and then taken out piece by piece on a, on, a, on a mat to dry. In this case, we don't have a lot of pieces of strip wood, and so I'm going to do this with uh, with a brush. And I just use a, an old brush. This is a, a got a fairly full uh, fiber on it, and and then it's just a matter of applying it on all surfaces. And you can you can this is the this is the dark one and you can apply that and you'll see the the deep grain that we've prepared with the file card the stain soaks in quite deep after I've done that I will take the strip wood again with the 6-0 and I, I will sand the entire strip that has been stained, and you've got to let it dry first. Um, this, um, any alcohol um, uh, stain base has a percentage of water in it, and water is one of the worst things uh, for wood, because what it'll do is it'll make the grain raise. It'll stand up, and this is this is probably one of the things that most modelers uh, fail uh, in uh, their models with uh, strip wood. Uh, when you photograph or look very closely, you'll see a lot of raised fibers in the wood when it's, when it's been uh, worked on. And in s some manufacturers, the wood is not uh, very clean, and you'll, you'll, you'll find a lot of raised fibers. And this steel wool is the way, is the way to get rid of that. And now, I sanded this before I stained it to cut a lot of the raised grain from the file card. I've stained this. I've let it dry, and because of the water that's in the alcohol, I've had to prepare it again with the steel wool. And now I have a very nice silky smooth finish here with no raised grain, and close-up photography isn't going to show all that. The other thing it does is it takes just a certain amount off the surface of this to lighten it up a little bit, and leaves the grain that is in uh, deeply cut with a little darker finish. There's another product that uh, I use occasionally, and uh, um, this is uh, uh, Dr. Ben's Scale Construction Weathering Solution. It's um, a product that uh, is, is, I would call it essentially it's a paint, uh, water-based, um, that uh, you apply with a, uh, preferably with a, with a bit of uh, a small piece of cloth and you just lightly brush it across the surface of the pre-stained wood. You can see the color. I actually really like this color because it uh, it's not just a, a cold gray, it's actually a warm gray, almost a putty color, uh, which is really perfect for uh, any wood that is really uh, aged and, and weathered that uh, some of these other stains that penetrate uh, just don't quite give the same character. With this product I take a piece of terry cloth, which has to be cotton, just put it over the end of my finger, and I just dip it in. Make sure you shake it first. And, uh, and then just lightly wipe over the surface, almost like in a dry brush effect. And it'll, it'll, it'll vary the texture. But what it's doing, it's, a, it's, it's leaving, a, it's depositing a, a, a gray film on the, 
surface and if it's not if you don't, if you don't do it uh, really soaking so it goes in and then it ruins the, the grain um, and it leaves this nice um, finish that is akin to um, driftwood and uh, Lee, I let that dry and I will do the same thing again with the steel wool just lightly very lightly just taking it off because it also has a bit of a water base in it. For assembly I use uh, essentially three products. Uh, one will be uh, a thick ACC or crazy glue and I'll use that for any places where uh, I'm looking for uh, some bonding with a little bit of a, a filler ability. The other will be the thin variety of crazy glue um, and I use that in places where uh, I'm going to be installing components with pins through these holes and so I want a thin ver version because what that does it capillarates a lot easier into the the hole where there's a very tiny clearance and uh, locks that pin in place. The other uh, glue that I use will be yellow carpenter's glue and I like yellow carpenter's glue uh, not the white one because when this dries it dries flat and sometimes I may put a little bit of water on on the uh, on the surface uh, and mix it in with this if I want something that's a little bit uh, with a little bit more flow uh, but this bonds wood to wood very very well sometimes when you're uh, applying uh, cra crazy glue uh, to a surface um, it doesn't uh, cure quickly and that's when I use this InstaSet uh, product. Uh, it's, an it's an accelerator and I can either use, I can either use uh, if it's a small spot that I want, I don't want because this has a sprayer on the end, what I'll do is just use the, the tube itself and I'll just touch the, the surface and, the, and it'll flow out of here, out of here uh, and onto the surface immediately where the joint is and what that does it virtually instantly cures and hardens the uh, the crazy glue and I use this uh, quite a bit just to speed up the process to cut strip wood I use the chopper and this is um, the long version uh, there's also a shorter one and this is made by Northwest Short Line you need a scale rule and what I'll do is I'll decide on the dimension. In this case, if I'm going to be putting strip wood uh, through here, I'm going to need to know the distance. And I will double check the distance here against what the instructions call for. And looks to me like about 7 foot 3 inches. And then what I'll do is I'll lay the scale in here and I'll set the blade right on 7 foot 3 and then I'll slacken the screw off and I'll bring the slide of the stop up against it and lock it in place again and we're good to go. Straw slide the strip wood. Now what I'll do is I'll, I'll on a fresh piece of wood I'll always just take the end off just so that I have a fresh end and then I'll lay that in, press it up against here, chop and then what this does it allows you to make multiple cuts giving you strips of wood that are all going to be identical and keep the blade down because you get your hand on it there you're going to get a severe cut and you can see from these this little sample that we've been using the I don't know if you can see that in there but um, you get various shades just by the variety of staining and brushing and that weathering that we put on there you can get a nice combination but these are all going to be identical as you can see dead on every one is identical and on larger pieces what I'll do is I'll just take because these small thin pieces are not as critical but on a larger piece that like a 12 by 12 or something where where you've got a large end section these blades on, on a large piece do cut on a slight slope and in that case I'll take it to the the disc sander and I'll just lightly just touch it press it in which will give me a dead flat end for that piece 